Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. Today we're back on project 67. It's another hot one today. We already got the fan here ripping, trying to cool this place off. If you saw my last video, you saw that we got new transmission mounts installed. Uh, we got the shroud painted and the engine dressed back out. Well, the fan installed and got the engine back in the car. So basically today we're gonna continue on with the process. Uh, that means carbs and sync link install. So on the intro of the video, you saw me already take these carbs apart. Basically, I just blew them apart, went through everything and cleaned it, made a few jetting changes, and then kind of slammed it all back together. I've got the sync link pulleys installed and ready to go. Uh, we got the rest of the pieces here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this stuff in the car. All right, so let's go ahead and get these carbs back in. Uh, I was smart this time and uh, went ahead and laced my fuel line back in before I crowded everything with the carbs themselves. Uh, but we'll go ahead and pull the towels out of the intake ports, uh, throw a fresh set of gaskets on there and throw the carbs in. Uh, one of the things that I like to use are these little uh, 11 millimeter brass nuts. Um, these have a small outer diameter, so they work really well uh, for the intake manifolds, uh, especially with these big cast aluminum manifolds that have a lot of meat around there. Uh, your normal 13 millimeter hex nut is really kind of tight to fit. Uh, either it won't or you have to kind of grind at the manifolds. But these little 11 millimeter brass guys work really well. The only downside is they're not magnetic, so don't drop one. It makes it a lot harder to try to fish it out of a port. Let's get rolling. This is the linkage that goes up at the throttle pedal itself. 
Uh, same sort of deal here. You've got a little captive nut with a set screw in there that the cable goes in and pinches in. And then you got a little heim joint here, a ball joint uh, that bolts to the pedal linkage. So it's gonna be impossible for me nearly to put this on, let alone try to get a video of it, but that's the piece that goes up at the accelerator pedal. All right, there's everything installed. Um, not too bad of a process. Uh, the cables can be a little bit of a chore as you turn them and try to put the ends on them. By far the hardest thing to work with is the little piece at the accelerator pedal itself. Uh, there just isn't a lot of room to work with up there. And of course, that's a piece that you have to kind of put in last. But anyway, here's everything installed. Uh, you can see the linkage here on the left-hand side carb, uh, which is the primary pulley. And the linkage over here on the right-hand side carb, which is the follower pulley. So the biggest advantage to this sort of setup versus like a hex bar is that you get the same exact rate of opening between the left and right bank. And that's because the diameters of these pulleys are the same left to right. And so as you open one, uh, you drag the other one open at the exact same rate uh, since the cable goes across the outer diameter of the pulley. What I mean is, if I back up here, you can see with my hand on the left hand pulley, as I crack it open just a little bit, you can see the right hand pulley follows along. And so there's an advantage here over like a hex bar linkage, which requires you to have really consistent geometry left to right between the hex bar and the down rods. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so if we compare it to a hex bar style linkage, uh, so this is originally a CB performance setup. Uh, so you see there on the filter base, there is a ball joint there and a ball joint over on this filter base, essentially that the hex bar at right arm. And what this happens is allows you to pull on the hex bar at that point with the throttle cable. And these down arms would have uh, little linkages with heim joints that go down to the carburetors. Well, as you can see, uh, there's quite a bit of compound angle to that. And if you don't have the geometry just exactly the same left to right, it's a real problematic process because one carb will tend to lead the other as you try to open the throttle. What really was bad on this Type 4 is if you look from the top up here, you can see that these non-offset manifolds actually don't allow me to line the hex bar up at all. You can see that with it touching the shroud here, I am well off over here on the left hand side. So what I had done is I had made a little standoff bracket that moved that pivot point out or backwards probably about an inch and a half and then I had to stand off the heim joint linkage down to the down rod to the carburetor itself that same distance. Well that just kind of brings in more trouble to this whole thing. So essentially I was fighting issues trying to get the geometry of all this stuff to match up. So the advantage to going to this uh, cable type system is now uh, I don't have to deal with trying to match the left and right geometry and the offset of these manifolds don't cause any problems at all. So long as the pulley diameters don't change, which obviously they're fixed, uh, each carb is gonna open up at the exact same rate. It's fairly easy to take all the slack out of these cables. So it follows along really well. I'm really anxious to try this out. Um, I have to do a little bit, of more, little bit more work on it. I do notice that I have a little bit of drag somewhere in the main cable, uh, so it's fighting me a little bit, not wanting to come all the way back. I got a little spot here. Um, if I do a big opening, it'll close right up, but if I do it real nice and soft, I got a little spot here that doesn't want to close all the way. So a little bit more fine tuning to do there, uh, but ultimately it's all in. Uh, pretty happy with the fit and finish. Um, Pete, who puts these kits together, uh, obviously does a really fine job. The machine work is uh, super nice. Uh, you can't ask for anything better than that. Uh, the cables themselves are very high quality. Uh, the cable jackets and everything are really nice. Uh, all in all, this is a really good kit. So I'm anxious to you know, put it all together, get the rest of the car put together, get it on the ground and uh, try it out. All right, so I think that's where we're gonna wrap it up for today. Um, as per usual, things in the garage always take about three times longer than you think they should. Uh, so I pretty well spent all afternoon trying to put this linkage together, uh, but basically it's in and ready to go. So the only things that we have left is to hook the wiring back up. I've got a wiring harness that I need to do a little bit more cleanup work on. Um, when I built the harness for the Type 4, I had to do some modifications to the gauge wires. Uh, so I just need to jacket that stuff all back up, put some heat shrink on it, and just clean it up. I need to throw the exhaust back on. Uh, that's just basically a bolt-on deal. 
Although I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go ahead and weld an O2 bung uh, on the header itself so I can put my wideband sensor in there and do a little bit of more educated tuning as we put this back together. Uh, with these particular 40 millimeter IDFs, I actually bumped the Venturi size up. Factory Venturis are 28 millimeters and I went up to 34 millimeters uh, because of the valve size in my head. Uh, so of course I have to change all of my jetting on that. Um, so I really kind of want to have real world feedback with the wideband just to kind of see where the AFRs are. Uh, to see if my mains are right and maybe tweak with the emulsion tubes really kind of get this thing dialed in really what i'm trying to do is make this car more drivable more enjoyable to drive really one of the big things was with solid mounts you know those were holdover for back when the car had a lot more while of an engine in there um, just don't need that rigid of a mount anymore i really just want to kind of quiet the whole drivetrain down uh, i have the exhaust for sale if you guys follow me on social media uh, that is available and i'm trying to actually find something quieter to put on the car uh, this system works pretty well, but it's really kind of louder than I want it to be. So really I'm just trying to put a lot of manners back into this car, make it nice and drivable, comfortable and enjoyable. Anyway, I think that's going to wrap it up for now. Uh, go ahead and give me a like on this video, give me a thumbs up, uh, and keep watching. You know, subscribe to the channel. Hopefully here, maybe the next video, I keep saying that. We'll get this thing on the ground, get it running, and do some tuning. See you next time.